Hi everyone, Gandalfax here for a 41st and brand new episode of our special editions Lore of the Universal Century. Today we're going back again to the One Year War era in an attempt to answer a particular question, which is... Yep, in this video we are going to explore the history of the literal small fry, its mechanical lore, variants and extract every bit of mechanical knowledge we have on them so far. Let's start by the beginning. What is exactly the Zaku Marine type? Codenamed MS06M, the Zaku Marine type, also retroactively called MSM01, was a prototype amphibious mobile suit, developed by the Principality of Zion during the early stages of the One Year War. A new variation of the Zaku series, specially adapted for underwater warfare, the marine type was not just any random amphibious mobile suit, but rather the very first attempt to bring the new Zion's Wonder weapon, the mobile suit, to naval warfare, another step aiming at gaining control of the earthly oceans. To fulfill such role, the Zaku Marine introduced a certain number of fundamental technologies and assets that would pave the way for succeeding amphibious models to follow. Amongst these techs, the Zaku Marine was notably outfitted with waterproof ceiling joints, which combined with newly designed parts, enabled it to dive to theoretically up to 400 meters of depth. The original Zaku's propulsion system, near useless in marine environments, was also completely overruled, with the backpack chemical rocket thrusters being replaced by a special hydrojet system, enabling the marine type to swiftly cruise underwater thanks to engines placed on the arms, backpack and legs. These engines were coupled with a special ballast tank, keeping the Zaku marine afloat when it had to surface. Now, to deal adequately with enemy federal submarines and warships, the MSM-01 also dropped the original Zaku loadout for new kinds of weapons, phasing out the traditional 120mm machine gun for the M6G Subrock, a 4 tubes 240mm submarine rocket launcher which projectiles had the piercing capabilities of submarine launch torpedoes. In addition, the Zaku Marine could also mount special optional equipments called Brownies M8 quadruple rocket pods that could fire water-to-air 180mm rockets, primarily for coastal bombardment. Ice on the cake, the Zaku Marine type was also conceptualized with anti-ground and anti-air combat taken into consideration, with a pair of 60mm cannons being installed in the head sealed under protective covers when the Zaku would dive underwater. With all these adjustments, the Zaku Marine could certainly seem like a decent amphibious mobile suit, and an excellent start for Zion amphibious series as a whole. Unfortunately, this was not exactly the case, with the Zaku Marine type proving to be an extremely flawed concept. Although certainly capable of performing Decently, the Zaku Marine suffered from poor waterproofing when it came to the sealing of its joints, an issue which coupled with other minor design flaws made it capable of diving hardly beyond 100 meters, far away from the intended 400 meters diving depth. Even worse, the MSM-01's bodily design, inherited from the Zaku 2 family, was found to be too unstreamlined for underwater cruising and rather unoptimized to be considered suitable for active combat. Because of this, the development project of the Zaku Marine type was unfortunately shelved by Zion, although its compiled data and blueprints led the foundation over which all future Zion amphibious mobile suits would start their development. Even better, the Zaku Marine's concept, later recovered by the Federation after the One Year War and further developed and refined, eventually proved to be a very decent balance between underwater performance and productivity with numerous direct descendants roaming the earthly oceans for the next two decades. But that's enough setting for today, let's get to our lore. The year is Universal Century 79. After almost a decade of brewing, the foreshadowed One Year War was now finally a reality, with the Earth's Federation and Principality of Zion clashing at full strength 
by January, the first month of the war. After very satisfactory results achieved during the Loom campaign, results achieved notably through the deployment of its new wonder weapon, the mobile suit, the Principality decided to finally move forward with a preventive strike, launching a full-blown invasion of Earth to force the Federation into submission. After initial landing operations in March, which resulted in the quick capture of Central Asia, Africa and North America, Zion eventually found itself in a delicate situation, mostly victorious but bogged down in the so-called gravity fronts. The three Federation earthly branches, stalemating with conventional equipment and in novelties Zion tried to bring down to Earth. With supply lines stretched and Earth superiority still in the firm grasp of the enemy Earth Federation Air Force, the top brass of the Zion Earth Attack Force decided to quickly remedy to this issue and connect all their forces while gaining superiority of most of Earth through an ingenious idea. Since Earth is composed at nearly 70% of water, the idea was that by heavily investing in naval and amphibious equipment, coupled with the current weakened state of the Earth Federation Navy, achieving marine superiority would not only be possible, but exponentially beneficial, securing Zion marine supply lines while disrupting the Federations, while gaining control of a sizable portion of Earth in the process. Although this idea quickly materialized by mid-March, with massive amounts of Federation Navy war material being captured, refitted, and enhanced at the California base, the engineers eventually turned their eyes toward the main mobile suit at that time, the Zaku-2, with the idea being to adapt the wonder weapon that had brought Zion victory in space to underwater environments. According to some sources, the idea to apply amphibious technology to mobile suits was not only pushed forward because of the 70% of water argument, but also because some companies specialized in megaparticle equipments such as Kia thought that beam technology could finally be applied to mobile suits through seawater cooling, an idea that would eventually be pioneered by the GOG. Either way, the concept of amphibious mobile suits was not born quite yet, with a sizable number of engineers, notably from Zionic, strongly believing the Zaku could be morphed into a sea dweller with little modifications to the base design. Thus was the MS-06M conceptualized, as its codename indicates a mere application of the Zaku 2 to marine environments. But surprisingly, the Zaku marine type was not developed from the specialized Zaku 2 ground type, with the general model, the F-type, being instead the one to be evilly refitted with the amphibious equipment. Some sources instead believe it was the Zaku-2 early type, the C-type, that was used as the base for the M-type, with its multi-layer cockpit shielding and anti-radiation liquid flooding, features rendered obsolete by the Antarctic Treaty that banned nuclear weapons, providing the required space to install waterproofing systems and pressure withstanding ceilings. By late March 1979, the Zaku Marine Development Project had already bore its first fruits, with a total of five prototypes being manufactured in Site-3 following the demand set by the Zion Earth Attack Force engineers. This first batch of units, codenamed MS-06M, were labeled as the M1 version, something we have to keep in mind for later on. By early April, the five Zaku Marines were shipped off to Earth to join the Sea Serpent Fleet, a submarine force assigned to the Western Atlantic Ocean with the intended goal of field testing. It was during this stay with the Sea Serpent unit that the Zaku Marines would start revealing their numerous flaws, going from poor cruising abilities, light flooding issues and shallow crush depth that what was initially calculated. To address this issue, the engineers thus produced a new batch of updated models, labeled as M2, with two new prototypes being produced as the codename MS-06M was phased out for MSM-01, the real official start to the amphibious line. Strangely enough, the new M2 units were not better than their M1 counterparts, with each generation possessing advantages and flaws over the other one. While the M1 suffered from pressure handling issues and poor waterproofing, it still possessed higher navigation speed than its successor, while the M2, albeit slower than the M1 underwater, was a much more reliable unit, notably through the waterproofing of additional joints and also the mono-eye camera. Nonetheless, none amongst the seven produced units, be it M1 or M2, was able to reach the expectations required by the Zion Navy, 
leading to all seven of them being sent to the warehouse, but the amphibious mobile suit project continued pushing in other directions, leaving the Zaku Marine project shelved behind. By August of the same year, some of these units would still be used for field testing, notably serving as the control unit of the underwater build cannon called the Aegir. Near the end of the war, despite the presence of the far better successors, the MSM-03 GOG or MSM-07 Zogok, all seven Zaku Marines would be again brought out of the Naftalin, being deployed on the European front to serve in the Mediterranean naval front line. The units would be assigned to the Sea Serpent Squadron, to other to the Red Dolphin Unit, while the Manta Ray, Naga Tree and Green Siren units each received only one. But let's roll back to April UC-79. The failure of the Zaku Marine project and by byproduct of the Zionic Company had the effect of a rotting carcass waved in front of hyenas, with Zionic main competitors, the Zymat and MIP corporations, both entering the stage to provide a viable amphibious product where Zionic had seemingly failed. Zymat was the first one to provide an alternative solution to the flawed Zaku Marine, proposing the direct continuation of the amphibious line, the MSM-2, mere weeks after the Zaku Marine fall of grace. Nicknamed Hydro Test Type, the MSM-2, also referred as the Aqua Experimental Type, was a machine which was developed directly from data compiled by the Zaku Marine itself, aiming to fix its predecessor failure by being a machine with higher amphibious performance, designed to have better cruising range alongside better performance on land. In terms of development, the MSM-2 was also the fruit of an in-house collaboration with him Zymat, being jointly designed by engineers who had already worked on concepts that would evolve in the future GOG, while introducing a special water-cooled generator provided by the Zymat's department, who was in charge of the dome development. Weaponry-wise, the Hydro test type introduced a completely renewed arsenal, comprised of four six-tubes water-to-water missile launchers located on its shoulders and forearms, alongside four water-to-air missile launchers mounted on the backpack. For anti-air or anti-ground combat, the MSM-2 instead adopted a pair of 70mm Vulcan guns, while also introducing a head Vulcan for anti-aircraft protection. Thanks to the joint development with the early GOG project, the Hydro test type also made use of a pair of Kia M23 megaparticle cannons, a technology later pioneered by the GOG itself. Ice on the cake, the Hydro test type was also carefully designed to achieve better underwater performance, with its rework engines and armor frames enabling it to reach between 110 to 120% of the maneuverability featured by the Zaku Marine. Despite all these qualities, the Hydro test type was far from being an optimal result, failing to meet the requirement set for underwater cruising abilities, as well as having super performance on land, a great handicap for an amphibious mobile suit, especially one derived from the Zaku. Because of this, the Hydro test type was only approved for limited production, alongside the early plans for the GOG, before being brutally discontinued as the GOG final design was set up. This led to Zymat completely abandoning the Zaku Marine design, instead turning toward the Gog and Jurik to represent them on the amphibious market. On the other side of the spectrum, MIP instead decided to start things from ground zero, ditching the idea to create a mobile suit based on the flawed Zaku Marine, instead going back to its own predecessor, the venerable Zaku 2 Type F. From the Zaku 2 F, MIP instead carefully manufactured a newly adapted amphibious model, codenamed YMS-04M and nicknamed Zerion, also more commonly referred as the MIP underwater test type. Similarly to what Zeonic had once done with the Zaku Marine, the Zerion was specially modified to withstand underwater environments, with the suit receiving waterproofing treatment for not only its joints, but all its electrical equipment, while also installing a pressure-resistant core inside the cockpit. Unlike the Zaku Marine, which only installed ballast tanks in the abdomen, the Zerion also mounted smaller versions in the legs, providing better surface flotability and general stability. The suit also mounted a new thermonuclear water engine, supposedly better than the hydrojet engine used by most of its competitors. Now, the Zerion also shined through its special head and shoulder armor, 
specially designed to improve underwater cruising abilities as well as reduce water resistance. The strange looking head also packed a special cloaking feature, enabling it to absorb and spread sound waves underwater, effectively disrupting enemy sonars who would be incapable of tracking its exact location. Weaponry-wise, the Zerion was also respectable, equipping a new type of Suburg gun while also making use of a waterproofed version of the MMP machine gun, while also gaining a new Luna Titanium sword for close-range combat. Sadly, the two produced Zerions would not prove to fare much better than their opponents, with tests conducted in the San Francisco Bay resulting in the loss of Unit 1, leading to the discovery that the ballast system was prone to malfunctions. Worse, all the fancy features of the Zerion didn't change the fact that its mobility and underwater cruising abilities were hardly superior to the Zaku Marine type itself, which combined with poor maneuverability and bio -NC, doomed the first MIP attempt to supplant Zeonic on the amphibious market. Last throw for the project, the model number MSM-04, which MIP thought was going to be given to the YMS-04M upon completion, was snatched away by Twinem, one of Zeonic's subcontractors who managed to have the model number assigned to their Agai development project, rather than the Zerions. As a result, the development department of the Zerion Feeling let down by both MIP and Zion, decided to abandon the Zerion development, instead moving on to a new amphibious mobile suit made from scratch rather than an extension of the Zaku line. Nonetheless, most of the Zerion's features would be inherited or inspire MIP's new proper amphibious mobile suit, the MSM-07 Zogok, while its hatch would inspire the one used by the mobile armor Groblo, later also manufactured by MIP. The second Zerion would still survive until UC-90, remaining in the hands of the Zion remnants until the events of Mobile Suit Variation Ridden. With the failure of both the Zerion and Hydro test type, the idea of an amphibious capable Zaku was more or less aborted by Zion, with the newer amphibious machines provided by all three companies, starting by the GOG, Agai and Zogok, becoming the norm around all future amphibious models would be based upon starting the trend of overly complex and specialized designs made from scratch. Although this trend would lead the Zion Navy to victory through its highly capable and versatile models, it also severely drained the resources and time of the Principality as a whole, one of the many reasons which eventually led to its eventual downfall and defeat against the Earth Federation. Fast forward to December UC-79. After the crippling defeat at the Battle of Odessa and the subsequent pull-up of most of the Zion Earth attack force back to space, some Zion units, especially amphibious squads, were left stranded on Earth, either trying to find a worthy location from which they part to space, either desperately continuing to wage war against the Federation as long as they could. Although the Principality was aware of this desperate situation, no rescue operation could possibly be considered. Notably, with the Earth Federation pushing deep into Zion defenses as part of Operation Star 1. Thus, as sort of apology gifts, the Zion Space Attack Force started supplying the stranded soldiers with newer leftover prototypes, notably the newer Gelgog models, which led to the creation of machines such as the Gelgog Ground Type, Desert Type, and as resources started to dwindle, the Gelgog G. In the alternative UC story Outer Gundam, it seems that a newer Zakutukai was also supplied to the Stranded, with a marine version of it appearing as part of the Amphibious Squadron based on the Mad Angler Vogt. How the Zakutukai marine type was created is a mystery to this day, although it seems more probable for it to be a retrofitted unit rather than a fully fledged new Amphibious model. But let's go back to the mainline UC. By the end of the One Year War, the Zaku Marine, like many Zion assets and prototypes, would be confiscated or recovered by the victorious Earth Federation, with its engineers surprisingly taking a real interest into the very same machine owned spurned by Zion. Indeed, while Zion had developed its amphibious doctrine around quality over quantity, prioritizing costly but one generation ahead machines on a large scale, the Federation had always frowned upon adopting over-complexified models, instead 
preferring productivity-friendly and adaptable designs. This was best exemplified by their one-year war mainstain amphibious model, the Gym Aqua, a cheap and functional design that was reliable underwater and could be produced from standard gym assembling lines, even if subpar in performance to any of the amphibious models. As such, the Zaku Marine type, a suit which parts could be produced from captured Zion assembling lines and which featured fairly decent underwater performance, was seen as something worth adopting by the Federal Navy, provided its flaws being fixed and its features of course modernized. As a result, the surviving Zaku Marines, both M1 and M2, were transferred to the Federation forces, with the M1 and its blueprints being moved to the New Guinea base, while the M2 and its data were instead assigned to the Dakar base. By UC-84, the Earth Federation naval forces, actively searching a replacement for the Jim Aqua, started turning their attention towards Zune-derived designs, with two ideas competing for adoption. The first one, the Aqua Isaac, was a newly created amphibious machine, crafted around the Eryx 106, the prototype version devised with half anime electronics involvement. The Aqua Isaac prodded itself through the use of assets derived from both Federal and Zion amphibious mobile suits alike, such as the protection headpiece or highly successful sub rock gun, while being specially made to be compatible with the Aqua Umbra B support model. The opposing concept was instead what was called the Marine Isaac, a recycled machine created from the Zaku Marine Type M2. Taking the same exact form that its predecessor, the M2, albeit with modernized armor plating, the Marine Isaac, however, featured greatly modified interiors, working upon the reliability in terms of waterproofing brought by the M2 to finally fix the remaining flaws of the Zaku Marine, finally making it a well-rounded amphibious model. As its name indicates, the Marine Isaac was also internally closer to the Isaac than to the original Zaku Marine, sharing numerous parts and components with the new hybrid machine produced by Anaheim Electronics. In parallel, the Marine Isaac also adopted the ERA cockpit standard, featuring the linear seat and all-sky panoramic cockpit, both standardized around the mid-UC-80s. With the Aqua Isaac rejected and its development stopped, the Isaac Marine was left unopposed to fill the ranks of the Federation Navy, with the surviving M2s being converted into Isaac Marines, while new units were instead manufactured by diverting assembling lines and parts once meant for the Zaku 2 Type F and Zaku Ground Type. The Marine Isaac would then become the mainstay of the Federation Navy for most of the UC-80s, until the arrival of newer models. As the UC-80s unfold, such newer models would progressively start to make their appearance on the underwater theater, starting with the RMS 192M, nicknamed Zaku Mariner or Sailor Zaku, a new machine completed around UC-87. A new amphibious model developed by the Jaburu Arsenal, once HQ of the Federation forces and now barely a backwater development base, the Zaku Mariner was yet another suit created as an improvement of the Zaku Marine type, being said to have been directly designed after the M1 type, thus taking advantage of its original higher cruising abilities. Although the suit was directly made by reusing parts and components from the venerable Zaku 2 to improve productivity, it was in itself a brand new design, far more streamlined and refined than the Isaac Marine, to serve as a better mainstay amphibious model. First of all, the Zaku Mariner featured an entirely overhauled propulsion system, abandoning the traditional fixed hydrojet engine used by most amphibious models for a projectable version, with the rear hydrojet thruster backpack and the cal front packs being fully detachable once the Mariner would leave the water, ensuring the suit would remove all unnecessary weight when fighting ashore. This same backpack hydrojet engine was also greatly refined in comparison to most pre-existing amphibious technologies, ensuring a cruising speed of 50 knots, not much higher than the 45 knots of the original Zaku Marine, but reducing navigation noise as much as possible. In terms of armoring, the Zaku Mariner, also still using super hot steel alloy mixed with titanium and ceramic composite, also adopted parts made of gunderium alloy, notably its chest-mounted water inlet components, making the suit not only far more resistant to physical damage, but gaining a crush depth of 2000 meters, a record for any amphibious mobile suit so far. 
Weaponry wise, the Zaku Mariner was also outfitted with capable assets, reusing the Subro gun of the Isaac Marine as a main handled weapon, but otherwise introducing a completely renewed inbuilt arsenal. On each of its shoulders, the Zaku Mariner mounted a set of 3 tube 300mm subrogue launchers, enabling it to deliver powerful missile volleys as it emerged from the water, thus providing preliminary bombardment to distract the enemy from interfering with its surfacing. On its backpack, a pair of similar 4 tubes launchers were also mounted, enabling the Mariner to keep firing missiles when submerging right before retreating. Ice on the cake, the Zaku Mariner also equipped a new asset for close-range combat, called the Magnet Archon, a metallic cable that could electrocute any mobile suit linked by its magnetic tip, similarly to the goofs it rode. Outside that, the Sailor also featured an innovative head design, introducing a 360 degrees tracking mono eye camera alongside a secondary mono eye placed on the top of its head, to use when the Mariner would cruise horizontally. Variation wise, three different subtypes of Zaku Mariner were designed and manufactured, namely a regular version, a commander one, and a reconnaissance type called the periscope type. These differed only through their head assembly, the commander type using an angular more powerful head antenna rather than the long pole antenna of the regular version, while the periscope type would, like its name indicates, add a different long antenna, with a camera periscope laid on its tip and connected through an extensible cable, meant to facilitate surface spying from underwater. With all these assets combined together, the Zaku Marine eventually proved to be a highly complete model, albeit a bit lacking in some fields due to the absence of any kind of beam weapons. When it came to its production, the Zaku Mariner was initially manufactured in Jaburo, before having its production site relocated to the Dakar base after the Jaburo facility was nuked by the Titans. By UC-87, distribution of the Zaku Mariner to Federation Navy units would eventually start, with most of the units ironically mostly falling in the hands of amphibious squadron that would defect to join Karabakh, leaving most of the remaining neutral squadron of the navy only with Isaac Marines. Worse, after the start of the first Neo-Zion war and the successful Axis invasion of Earth, Dakar would fall in Neo-Zion hands, with the Zaku Mariner assembling lines being subsequently transferred to the victorious Axis forces. Also, Axis Top Brass would initially spurn the Zaku Mariner, instead preferring the newer capsule designed by their own engineers, they would eventually be forced to start distributing Zaku Mariners as well, with most Axis and Zion Remnants pilots alike blatantly giving more credit to the proven design of the Mariner rather than the exotic approach proposed by the capsule. Although the Federation would eventually regain control of Dakar on the Mariner line, the damage would have been done to its reputation, with the Navy instead reverting back to the Jim Aqua while progressively transitioning toward the Sea Jagan, while secretly and progressively providing the remaining mariners as supplies to the Marine Zion Remnants, ensuring the Federation Navy continued funding because of the Zion Remnants' persistent presence in the oceans. The Zaku Mariner would however not be the last spawn of the Zaku Marine type, with the Federation engineers having designed yet another derived model in parallel to the Mariner's development. Around the same time the Mariner was engineered, the Jaburo arsenal was also involved in the development of yet another Zaku Marine's type successor, the RMS 188MD, referred as the Zaku Diver. An experimental amphibious mobile suit designed for underwater cover operations and deep sea salvaging, the Zaku Diver was a new approach around the Zaku Marine design, using reworked armor frames and equipment to achieve even higher performance than the Mariner. Thanks to its design, weirdly more in line with the original Zaku Marine, the Diver was able to achieve underwater abilities exceeding any conventional amphibious mobile suit so far, possessing decent cruising speed and also gaining a crush depth theorized to reach the 4000 or 5000 meters, a record for any amphibious assets aside submarine mother ships. Like the Jim Aqua and now defunct Aqua Isaac, the diver also introduced a special cover for the mono eye camera, protecting it from pressure damage when cruising in the ocean's depth. Aside this, the diver also introduced a diverse if not surprising arsenal, with some features being more useful than others. As a main weapon, the diver made use of a new variant of the Subrock gun, 
with our targeting sensor and with a tubage of 10 torpedoes, a weapon also usable by the Zaku Mariner but not equipped with the sensor. On its right arm, the diver adopted a similar magnet archon that is causing the Mariner, while instead mounting an explosive harpoon gun launcher on the left arm, a similar tech once used in the Gundam Marine type. Bizarrely, the diver was equipped with a pair of 60mm Vulcan cannons on its head, a decent anti-aircraft inbuilt weapon, but one very unnecessary to have for a suit meant to at best fight in deep environments, and rarely meant to come ashore. Because of this, some Japanese sources theorized that these weapons were not things willingly introduced in the design, but a leftover from the original Zaku Marine design that was left by the engineering teams. Unlike the Mariner, which de facto became more of a Zion use technology, the Diver instead more or less remained in the Federation armories, eventually falling out of use due to the poor reputation brought by the Mariner. And with the Diver eventually ended the Zaku Marine line, last direct descendant of the earliest attempt at creating amphibious mobile suits. But who will survive?